The Jets face some big decisions this offseason. We'll talk about some of them on today's episode of the Locked On Jets podcast. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. This is this is the Locked On Jets podcast for Thursday, February 10th, 2022. I'm your host, John B. from GangGreenNation.com. And today our episode is brought to you by Get Upside. Just download the free Get Upside app and use promo code TOUCHDOWN to get 25 cents per gallon or more cash back on your first tank. Thank you so much for making this show your first listen every day and now perhaps your first watch. Locked On Jets is free and available on all platforms. And that includes YouTube. So if you like what you see or hear, click the subscribe button and you'll never miss an episode. And if you're watching on YouTube and like the show, give this episode a thumbs up. It will help other Jets fans find it. On today's show, I'm going to talk about some big decisions the Jets front office needs to make this offseason. Now, by no means are these the only decisions the Jets will face, but these are important things, and they may show you where some of the priorities lie as they try to rebuild this roster. And I'm going to begin by talking about what I think the big goal will reveal itself to be this offseason, because I think the Jets could go in one of two directions. They could either say our major goal is to develop Zach Wilson, or our major goal is is to build a winning team. And these are not necessarily mutually exclusive. I think there's a degree of overlap here, but let me explain what I mean. The Jets obviously need a lot of work on the defensive side of the ball. One of the worst defenses in the NFL last year, you could argue it was the worst defense in the NFL. However, they also need to develop a young quarterback. And this young quarterback had a tough rookie season and they need to give him as much support as possible. Listen, a lot of it's going to be Zach improving. Zach has a great work ethic by all accounts. And one of the things that's encouraging about Zach Wilson is that if you've followed his career historically, he maybe has struggled a little bit early in all of his stops, but he's gotten better along the way. I did a great podcast last year with the host of Locked On BYU, and he talked about how Zach at the beginning of his high school career it wasn't that great, and then he got better. He turned himself into a legitimate college prospect. And then if you followed his career, you know, at BYU, the first couple of years were okay, nothing special. Then his final season, he played great. So there's some reason for hope for, for, with Zach. And a lot of it, the improvement's going to have to come from him. But the Jets need to do everything they can to help him along. Because we've seen it. We've seen it with Sam. We saw it with Gino. You want to go back far enough? We saw it with Mark. Even though Mark had really good supporting cast the first two years, things really deteriorated in year three and especially year four. And maybe these guys were destined to just not be very good, but the Jets did not help them along enough. And I think the Jets have done a better job with Zach so far. I think there are some legitimate players on this offense, but you want to build this into as good of an offense as possible. But you also have to focus on the defense because this team's not going to win games unless this defense starts playing a lot better. What we saw for most of the season was a frankly, unacceptable. And I think a lot of it's just the players aren't good enough. You have some pieces you can build around. Bryce Hall looked like a a real player this past year. On the defensive line, guys underperformed, but you do have talent. You have Quinn and Williams. You have John Franklin Myers. There's only so many resources the Jets have this offseason, though. So the question is, how much do you put into the offense? How much do you put into the defense? If your goal is solely to develop Zach Wilson, you may just go all in on the offense. You may just try and give give him a premium offense and you'll live with the results on defense. Whereas if your goal is really to win, you may take a more balanced approach. And again, I want to emphasize, this is not strictly an either or situation. Even in the scenario where you decide Zach Wilson is our priority, you're still going to add defensive players. It's not like the Jets are going to go through the entire offseason and all of their big free agent signings are going to be on offense all of their draft picks are going to be on offense. And on the same note, improving the supporting cast of Zach Wilson is going to help the team win games, obviously, because a better offense will lead to better results in the win-loss column, or at least you would hope it would. 
So on some level, these are not necessarily competing values, but I do think there is a bit of a distinction here. Are the Jets more focused on developing Zach Wilson? And that would indicate that, first of all, the people running the team are very secure in their jobs because you probably go through another season, hopefully not 4-13. and 13. I mean, they have to improve. I don't think they can win four games again and have everybody come back. But it shows you that they don't think that the immediate goal of making the playoffs is something they need to do to keep their jobs. Whereas... I'm not sure necessarily if they invest more in the defense, it's a sign that they're, they're more worried, but it does show you that maybe they're more focused on winning games, building a winning culture. And what's the right answer? I mean, you can kind of argue it either way. Obviously, the goal is to win. Jets have not made the playoffs in 11 years. We're all very impatient. We want to see a winning team. But on the other hand, the long-term franchise, a lot on Zach. It depends on a lot on his development. And while... He's going to, he is going to have to play a big role in his own improvement. He's got to get better from the pocket. He's got to get more accurate, especially on short passes. I mean, he's got to make the gimmies. But ultimately, you've got to help this young quarterback as much as you can. So, again, it's not exactly like this is a huge choice. It's not, not like the type of choice where you either have to go all in one way or the other. But it is important for the Jets. And it's going to be interesting to see how the front office approaches this in the coming off season. Will it be we're focused on developing the quarterback above all else, even if it costs us games in 2022? Or is it a situation where you say, you know what? Coaching staff entering year two, general manager entering technically year four, really year three, haven't made the playoffs in 11 years. We're going to build up this whole team. And there's also an argument that perhaps building a defense could help Zach Long as well, because you don't necessarily want to put your quarterback into a situation where he has to win a bunch of shootouts. That, I guess that's the other part of this, is that a good defense can help a young quarterback. We saw that with Sanchez's first couple of years when the Jets were not putting him in tough spots. They were not putting him in obvious situations where he needed to make plays and maybe force throws that he should not have. So, again, some overlap here, but I think one thing the Jets need to decide before this offseason begins is whether the this is developing the quarterback or whether it's winning games. Now, listen, they're going to be focused on both. There's no question, but like, or what are they going to emphasize more? Now, ahead here on the Lockdown Jets podcast, I'm going to talk about another thing the Jets need to figure out before the offseason begins, and that's how they build their defense. We'll talk about that ahead here on this Thursday episode. Of course, last year, the Jets drafted Zach Wilson because they thought he had plenty of upside. And now I want to tell you about an app called Get Upside. It's an incredible app everyone who buys gas needs to know about. My listeners are earning cash back for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free GetUpside app in the App Store or Google Play right now and use promo code TOUCHDOWN for $0.25 per gallon or more on your first fill-up cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using GetUpside. Just download the app for free and use promo code TOUCHDOWN for $0.25 per gallon or more on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot are making as much as two or $300 a year in cash back, and there's no catch. The cash back gets added right to your account. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code TOUCHDOWN to get $0.25 cents per gallon or more cash back on your first tank. Again, that's promo code TOUCHDOWN using the GetUpside app. It's Super Week, brought to you by Get Upside, and there's no better place to get coverage of the big game than the Locked On NFL podcast. And in addition, Locked On Bengals and Locked On Rams are in L.A. all week covering the big game. Of course, the Jets are not playing in the Super Bowl. They have not even been in the playoffs in 11 years. And we face another offseason where the front office will try to build this team into a winner. And on today's episode, I'm talking about some of the big decisions they will need to make as they consider their options for the offseason. In the first segment, I talked about whether they will take an approach that emphasizes developing Zach Wilson or whether they will take an approach that emphasizes winning games more immediately. And I think there's an argument to be made for either option. Now I want to talk about defense because I think that philosophically, this might, this offseason might tell us where the Jets front office and coaching staff stands on one specific position, and that's cornerback. Now, I don't think the Jets wanted to ask a lot of, out of their corners last year. On third downs, on passing downs, they did press and they did play man-to-man a fair amount. They liked to blitz in those situations. 
But my perception was that on early downs, they kind of like to ask as little as possible from their corners. They played lots of deep zones. They were not asking these corners to cover a tremendous amount of ground. And I think part of that's that they had a bunch of late round picks, lots of young players who they did just did not want to put a lot on their plate. And that's one of the ways you hide corners if you don't feel confident in them, because if you only ask them to cover a small area, there are lots of corners in the NFL capable of doing that. Whereas if you're asking them to do something more like what the Jets did, you know, 10, 11, 12 years ago with Darrell Rivas and follow the other team's best receiver around and follow them around the field, there are less corners capable of doing that. So that's one of the things you do if you if you need to hide corners, even very soft zones, very constrained areas. You don't ask a lot out of them. But that means a lot of the field's kind of going uncovered. And that means you need other people to cover more ground. And typically those are going to be your liners. Those are going to be your safeties. I think this offseason will be interesting. It will kind of tell us where the Jets stand at the corner position, or at least what they think about the corner position as they build this team. Are they going to make more of an investment at the position and ask more out of them? Or are they going to continue to try and develop guys? And you know, Robert Salas' history may give us some sort of answer to that because in San Francisco, they invested heavily on the defensive line. They did not invest so heavily at corner. And it could be a situation where they think they can coach guys up. It may be a situation where they think they can eventually improve these corners and get them to a point where they can handle more. But it also might be a situation where they just philosophically believe that they don't want to invest at corner. And there's a plausible argument for that because if you're investing more at linebacker and safety and asking more out of linebacker and safety than your typical team, well, linebacker and safety is cost less on the open market than corners. So it could be a spot where you save money, where you say, you know, we're not going to ask our corners to cover a lot of ground. We'll just invest more than and linebackers and safeties, and we'll save a little bit of money that way. So it's definitely one way you can do it, but there are trade-offs there. And I think if you look at this defensive line, there's one big question right now above all others. And that's what happens. That's what will happen with John Franklin Myers. Because Franklin Myers played a lot on the edge this year. He played a lot of defensive end in the Jets' even fronts, their, their four-man fronts. If you look at his skill set, he may be better equipped inside a defensive tackle. But I think part of the reason he played a defensive end this year was, well, first of all, I think it was just the talent of the roster. You had Carl Lawson hurt. He did not have a lot of talent on the edge, so maybe they, they moved him outside for that reason. But beyond that, I think there was another thing that came into play here is that if you're having linebackers cover this extra ground, if you want safeties to be speedy, and I think especially more at the linebacker, but also to a certain extent at the safety position, you're probably going to have to have smaller guys who are faster, who are not going to be as adept at shedding blocks. So that means you need a defensive line to protect them. And I think the Jets maybe put Franklin Myers at defensive end more this year because he's a, he's a big pretty big defensive end. So they wanted to get as big as possible on the defensive line to maybe help protect the linebackers. And quite frankly, it really did not work that well. I think you saw the way the defense played. And I think there was some underachieving on the defensive line through the season. But if you want to get back to a point where you can move Franklin Myers inside and have maybe a more conventional edge rusher across from Carl Loss in the season and have a four-man line of Lawson and Quinnen Williams and Franklin Myers, and then, a, again, a more conventional edge rusher, then maybe you need to ask your corners to cover a little bit more ground. Because if you your corners can cover a little bit more ground, that means your linebackers need to cover less ground. It means maybe they can get a little bit bigger. You know, C.J. Mosley came in. He tried to play faster this year. The results were kind of up and down. So... It makes you know it could make the whole defense better if they invest a little bit more at the linebacker position. It's not clear how they want to do it though. I think that, again, there's a plausible argument either way on this. I don't think that there's necessarily a quote unquote right answer or a quote unquote wrong answer. It's more of a philosophical thing. I would probably lean more towards emphasizing the corner position. I think in today's NFL, if you have guys who can cover, it opens up a lot on your defense. If you have guys who can cover one on one. You feel lots better about sending blitzes, especially on passing downs like the Jets like to do. I can see either argument, though. And part of it will come into how good can Bryce Hall get. I think most people would agree Bryce Hall is part of the solution going forward. 
is he the type of guy you can count on to cover the other team's best receiver? That's not entirely clear yet. So that that's something that could come into play. And it's, it goes back to the question of coaching. You know, I talked about San Francisco earlier in Robert Salo's career. He had an entry-level job with the Seattle Seahawks, and that was right as the Legion of Boom was rising. And Pete Carroll built a tremendous group of corners around a bunch of late-round picks. You had Richard Sherman, you had Byron Maxwell, you know, Jeremy Lane. And then in addition to that, not a late-round pick, but a guy they signed from the CFL in Brandon Browner. And they were just able to coach those guys up. And slowly over time, they were able to ask more out of those corners. And you actually kind of saw an adjustment over time there where early in Carroll's tenure in Seattle, they also put a guy who was kind of similar, to, not entirely similar to Franklin Myers, but they kind of went big on the defensive line early in Carroll's tenure. And then as the Legion of Boom started to rise, they were able to move to a more conventional four-man defensive line with you know two, two kind of conventional edge rushers. It'll be interesting to see how they approach this. So a couple things to look out for, but ultimately I think there's one philosophical question is how much do you value corners? And that will tell you a lot about how the Jets build the rest of this defense for the reasons I just mentioned. Now, ahead here on the Locked On Jets podcast, there's one more question that we're going to talk about. The Jets will need to answer it this offseason. I think the answer for, the, for this one is pretty obvious, though, but we'll see what you think ahead here on the show. You know, the Super Bowl is almost here, and Bet Online has you covered with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues its march to the big game. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just football. BetOnline has up-to-the-minute info on pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, and UFC, along with real-time updates of current games. So once Sunday passes and the NFL season's over, you can continue to go to BetOnline. Don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online, where the game starts. This is the Locked On Jets podcast on this Thursday, talking about some big questions the Jets front office faces this offseason. Now, I've talked about whether their focus is going to be around building around Zach Wilson or whether it's going to be on building a more complete team. We've talked about how they address cornerback and how that could impact the way the rest of the roster is built. This last question, I think, has a pretty obvious answer, and that's whether or not they pick up Quinn and Williams' fifth-year option. Now, in the NFL, first-round draft picks, and some of you will know this, so I apologize if we're going over something you know already, but in the NFL, first-round draft picks get a four-year contract, but the team also gets an option for a fifth year. The catch is, the team has to decide whether or not to pick up that option after the player's third season. So Quinn and Williams just completed his third season. This offseason, the Jets need to figure out whether they're going to pick up his fifth-year option. Now, in the past, the fifth-year option was done differently than it will be this year. The rules just changed this year. It used to be ba- the amount you got paid used to be based on where you were drafted. So a top 10 pick had a fifth-year option that was much higher than picks 11 through 32. Now there's a formula that's based more on performance. There's one level you you get if you go to multiple Pro Bowls. It costs a little bit less if you've only gone to one Pro Bowl. It costs a little bit less if you've never been to a Pro Bowl, but you've played a lot of snaps. And then there's a level even below that, which is essentially you haven't played a lot of snaps and you haven't made a Pro Bowl. And that's actually the level Quinton Williams falls at right now because he's had a lot of injuries. So he's missed a lot of time, playing time during his career and he's yet to go to a Pro Bowl. So overthecap.com ran some projections, and they estimate that Quinn and Williams' fifth-year option is going to be about $10.2 million. And that will be fully guaranteed. And this is another rule change. It used to not be guaranteed. You could cut the player, and there'd be no dead money. The fifth-year option is now fully guaranteed when you pick it up. But only $10.2 million. And listen... I understand that there could be some disappointment about Quinnen Williams. On some level, I'm kind of disappointed in Quinnen so far because outside of that stretch, maybe the second half of year two in 2020, really has not been the dominant force we've been looking for. He's had some good games, but if you look at the defensive struggles this year, I think he's got to take some blame for it. I don't think he's a bad player, though. I think he's a good player. I think he's a quality starter. Maybe he's not what everybody was hoping for with pick number three overall in 2019, but I don't think you can say he's a weakness, despite the disappointment. And I got to say, $10.2 million for a player like Quinn and Williams, that's not a bad deal. Now, 
should the Jets give Quinn and Williams a big contract going forward? Well, it depends on how big. I'm not really sure about that. Should they be negotiating a, a extension this offseason? Again, it depends on what he's asking for. But to keep him around one more year at $10.2 million seems like almost a bargain, especially in the, the market the NFL's in right now. You're going to see the cap go up this year. I mean, over the next few years, the cap's going to go up a lot because the NFL's new TV contract's about to begin, and it's going to roughly double the revenues the league made from the previous contract. So you're going to see the cap go very high. And the cap is based on the revenues the league makes. So their number one revenue source is the TV deal. And that's, again, that's about to double in value. So you can imagine how much the cap's about to go up. So with that in mind, $10.2 million for Quinn and Williams for one more year seems like a pretty good deal. What happens with Quinn in long term? That's more of an open question, but I think that this is a pretty obvious situation where you pick it up, even though it's now guaranteed. It did not used to be guaranteed, but it's a pretty affordable deal, I think, for the Jets. The whole point of the fifth-year option is they were trying to make it relatively affordable for teams to keep a first-round pick for another year, and I think in the Jets' case, this is a deal that really would make sense. Anyway, that's all for our show today. Thank you for listening, and thank you for watching. This has been the Locked On Jets podcast. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network. As always, if you like the show, subscribe to it. Leave it a five-star review if you're listening on a podcast source. And give this episode a thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube. Have a great Thursday, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow to close out the week.